Hello and welcome to this Computer Music Hands-On with Cable Guy's Filter Shaper 3. In this video we'll be taking a look at all of Filter Shaper 3's main features and showing you how to use them. You can read the full review in Computer Music issue 202. Filter Shaper 3 is a dual filter plugin for Mac and PC in VST and audio units formats. It features a range of filter modes and types, the ability to run the two filters in series or parallel, and most importantly, a pair of totally customizable LFOs and an envelope follower for every single knob which has this button next to it. Let's start with the basics. Here we have Filter Shaper 3 running on the master output of a machine project. We've got a limiter inserted after it as well, just in case. We've got a, a good range of filter types on board in 6, 12 and 20, 40 B slopes. The very clean, non-resonant types, just at 60 B slopes. Through the resonant 12 dB clean types. Twenty four dB cleans with resonance. And the new Salon key types, which are warm and aggressive, and feature hard and soft resonance distortion algorithms. As well as filter drive, which can introduce some very extreme distortion. The two filters can be arranged in series or in parallel. When they're in series, the signal goes through filter one, then filter two. When in parallel, the filter goes through both at the same time. Thus, each one has its own pan setting and volume control. We'll come back to the parallel setup in a bit. You also get a master section with mix control for parallel processing. As well as volume and pan for the wet output. The beating heart of Filter Shaper 3 is its extensive modulation setup. 
This area down here shows the two LFOs and envelope follower for the currently selected parameter. Parameter selection is made by just clicking the buttons next to each one. So here we are. Now it's showing the LFOs and envelope follower for the resonance. And now for the cutoff of filter one. Let's start with the envelope follower because it's very straightforward. Increasing the intensity knob controls the depth of modulation. Turning it upwards, sets the input level to modulate the filter cutoff upwards. While turning it down, modulates downwards. Response can be adjusted with this basic AHD envelope. That's it with a very long attack, so there's not much going on because it's not being given time to actually do any modulation. Shortening the attack causes the modulation to happen quicker. The modulating headline act though is the LFOs. These are far more powerful than your average LFO in that you design the entire wave shape yourself. Although you do get some starting points. It's a sine wave. And a ramp. There are various syncing and triggering options on board. We're running sync to just beat sync to our, to our host door. And various speed options. Half a bar. One beat so that each LFO cycle is one beat long. Or we'll slow things down. We can expand the LFO views out to two levels using the magnifying glass buttons ultimately filling the whole screen. So we have a sine wave here. However, we can add our own points wherever we want. A left click selects adds what's known as a soft point, which as you can see generates a nice soft curve. While a right click adds a hard point, far more angular. Soft points can be converted to hard points with a right click and hard points are deleted with a right click. You can snap the waveform to the grid for moving and adding points. modify the waveform as a whole with these buttons below. This one for example flips it on its vertical central axis. Well this one does the same on the horizontal axis. These two buttons shift it right and left. And you have undo and redo within the editor itself. You can also generate a random waveform which will always have the same number of points as the current one, which is kind of useful if you just want some instant inspiration. And you can store the current wave as a snapshot for recall. The reason for having two LFOs on each of these parameters is that you can take advantage of the interactions between them. 
Here's a pad sound running through filter shaper 3. At the moment, we're modulating it to pan and filter 1's cutoff. Let's bring the second LFO on filter 1's cutoff into play. Just create a random curve on it. So currently both of these LFOs are running at a one bar cycle. And both modulating the filter cutoff in combination. You can see the modulation shape itself here. If we set the intensity of LFO1 back to zero, you'll see that the modulation shape becomes exactly the same as LFO2, because that's now the only thing modulating it. The more we dial in LFO1 in either direction, the more the shape changes as it becomes a combination of the two. Again, zero LFO2, the shape becomes that of LFO1. Of course, we don't have to run both LFOs at the same speed either. Let's try switching LFO2 to one beat. Faster. Maybe a bit too much. Or slower. Now the whole cycle will take four bars to complete. Remember the depth of any LFO has its own LFO and envelope follower. be fully designed just like all the rest. And you can see the result of that modulation here in the intensity knob. So we're modulating the depth of LFO2 with this LFO, which is running on an eighth note cycle. That is a lot of modulation. Setting the two filters to parallel mode enables a range of multiband and side change style effects. That's the most basic example of this, is that you can create a perfect band split by using the 6dB clean filters, low pass on one and high pass on the other, set to link mode, which means that they both move together. As you can hear, when this is done, moving them has absolutely no effect on the signal. However, what it does mean is that the pan and volume controls for each filter effectively just operate on the band underneath the cutoff or above the cutoff of that filter. So we can just pan the low end, for example. Or perhaps more appropriate would be to pan the high end. Setting the bottom limit of that high end with the cutoff. You can also put its volume up. or down, in which case we're effectively running a low-pass filter. So 
So for a bit of basic multi-band style mixing, that could prove quite useful. Once you've got your band split set up, you can make a sidechain style effect by simply modulating the volume of one or both bands. It's our pad sound again, with Filter Shaper 3 bypassed, turning it on. You can hear what appears to be sidechain filtering or compression keyed off the kick drum. All it actually is, is an LFO shape that drops the volume of the low band of our two band setup on every beat of the bar. This gives us the opportunity to show off another clever feature of Filter Shaper 3. We copy this shape by hitting the copy button. We can paste it to the LFO of say the pan control using the paste and connect command. So now as you can hear, we have panning to go with our side chain effect. If we go back to the volume and edit the envelope so that the volume is dropping on every eighth note. If we then flip back to the pan, we can see that because they're connected, the same thing has happened to the shape of that LFO. Too much, just disconnect it and get rid of it, making no difference to the volume LFO. Finally, Filter Shaper 3 features an ever-expanding library of presets supplied by the developers themselves and the user community. Community library is hosted in the cloud on the Cable Guys server. To sync your library with the cloud, simply click the sync button. Presets can be searched for by name, by author, and are filtered by category. Presets can also be given a star rating, with the average community rating showing for those that you haven't rated yourself. And your own presets can be made private or shared. When shared, they'll be uploaded next time you sync your library. Thanks for watching this Computer Music Hands On with Cable Guy's Filter Shaper 3 plugin. You can read the full review in Computer Music Issue 202, which is on sale now.